to say this, you should buy silver because JP Morgan never loses. And um, what I'm actually stating here is something a little bit different than what it sounds like on the surface because uh, if you look over the last year, JP Morgan has had, had has had not one losing trading day. Every single day they won. Every single day they won. That's impossible. <laughs> Unless the system is rigged. And this is actually becoming to the forefront now where you know they're talking about uh, high speed trading, rigging the casino, you know, it's been talked about for years. Actually JP Morgan has won uh, over 90% of its trading days in the last five years. But that's why you do buy physical metals. Now I know today the commodities took uh, a bloodbath except for maybe sugar, you know, sugar commodity, you know, the stuff you put in your tea and coffee or whatever. Uh, actually, agriculture commodity has been doing very well in livestock since the beginning of 2014. But that's probably not due to currency. That's probably due to... Uh, you know weather weather related problems but uh, if you want to actually see an example real recently well actually even if you want to go back a little less recently Argentina actually in the last year has had a currency collapse but also uh, not so much in Ukraine they didn't really have a currency collapse but their currency is down 70 percent against gold in the last four months um, and you know, and you could say all the reasons for it and stuff like that, but you know, the whole point is, it's the, that's the whole reason you have gold, silver, or any physical types of metals or physical goods to hedge against inflation, which doesn't seem to be plausible at the time. Right now, as we speak, it looks like inflation's under control, but you know, that's what always happens. You know, the fundamentals are there that inflation is not under control, actually. Uh, if the dollars are rejected that are held over broad that are held abroad and they come back to the United States we're going to have rampant inflation no doubt about it um, you know what's interesting though where I think that commodities are going to go up is global tensions because the Cold War is back on really officially and you know I know like the president President Obama doesn't really set policy per se. He's got a whole team of people behind him and you know, they they pretty much tell him what to say. He's the focal point, right? I mean it's obvious. It's always kind of been like that, but um it's pretty much a given now that the Cold War is back on and actually that should be pretty good for commodities. Um now I just want to state something else about like silver and some of these commodities like that because Actually, one reason that, another reason, let me put it this way, that the mainstream media or the big brokerages don't push investing in silver is because of, there's not that much of it around because, let me put, well, it's, it, let me put it to you this way a little bit, that, in other words, brokerages, brokerage houses, brokers, the more dollars they have under their management the more money they make now they will lose clients if the client if they lose money their clients money or if the clients don't do that good in the year they will lose clients right so they got to give out good advice but the more dollars they have under their management the more money they make now if you start thinking about how much how many dollars can invest in silver not many not many maybe the mining sector indirectly right maybe indirectly uh, gold there could be a hell of a lot more money that can invest in gold than silver but still that's a microscopic pi pile of money that would be invested even in gold if you put the broad market out there and actually that's our point because there's so many dollars and so much money that just exists digitally that if it had to go back into something that's hard assets uh, these hard assets would greatly inflate in price because of all the avalanche or the tidal wave of money trying to go back into a small bucket with that represents the precious metals now also if you want to take it more extreme go to palladium I know palladium took a major hit today and you got to keep this in mind with palladium because I think it's gonna super spike up to some crazy amount of money but it's also when I say spike it's gonna have a downward curve a fast downward curve and I am not gonna know what the top is going to be because and nobody's going to know 
except some of the Russians. <laughs> and they're not going to be on YouTube telling you what the top's going to be. But let me put it to you this way. Um, you know, a lot of times you're not getting any advice about investing in palladium because, you know, even amongst the people that are saying you invest in gold and silver, that's a small part of the market. Now, you start figuring the amount of money that could be invested in palladium that could be under management, you know, as a broker, as, under your management as a broker, it's infinitesimal, even compared to silver, which is infinitesimal compared to gold. And also you figure, like, how many uh, options, I don't want to use the word option, how many uh, different uh, types of mining companies could you really invest in? Um, you got uh, Norals Mine up in Russia, which basically, I don't know how you can invest in that. You got North American Palladium in uh, Canada, which I heard has had, had management problems over the years. You got Stillwater in the USA. And, you know, these are minor palladium players. There's also in South Africa, but then there's also all these unstable strikes. And yeah, that's a risky game, even investing in any of these miners. But you really can't even invest in the miners of palladium that easily because um, they're so small and unstable in a lot of ways. You know, the only one that's pretty big, actually, would be the nickel mine up in northern Siberia, in Norals. Norals. But, you know... You really don't know what's going to happen with that. There's so many problems up there. And it, the stocks, you know, I, I just wouldn't invest in Russian stocks anyway. But, you know, it's something that, see, this is why you're not hearing about palladium. Because you can't get a lot of clients to invest a lot of money in palladium and thus have a lot of money under your management. That's why the brokers aren't telling you to do that. Because their game is to get as many dollars as possible under their management. And that's how they make money. You know, if they got $20 million under their management, the broker might make $100,000 a year. Right? So, I mean, they're not, it's easier to get them to bite on other things. You know, that's their whole game. It's a sales pitch, basically. That's the whole deal. Now, I know there's silver pumpers and stuff like that. Now, I'm not going to influence the market with palladium. I know what the market's going to be influenced by. It's by the Russians, and I don't know what the hell, how they're going to influence it or when they're going to re influence it, but I think there's probably going to re be a repeat of 2001 where it spikes up way to hell over the price of gold. <laughs> I don't know exactly how much more, but it probably will. Um, I also want to actually tell you something else about, um, you know, the... Russian oligarchs and stuff, you know, I put some stuff out here before, and, you know, I forgot a lot of stuff, but I know, like, I knew some of the stuff from before, but not just by reading it on the internet, that Cyprus was a tax haven for Russian oligarchs, and um, especially on interest of companies that are set up in there, like any interest income from companies that are set up in there, it's basically, I think there's 0% tax, there's, like, extremely low tax on commodity trades, uh, actually, the only thing I think it's taxed on commodities is, or is on real property, is immovable property. Like, in other words, real estate. So if you're dealing with, you know, uh, all these different commodities that the Russians trade in, I, th I think there's, well, it's either very low or no tax. I, I can't remember. I don't remember exactly. But that's really the main reason uh, Putin is allegedly involved in there. He's got a Swiss trading company and it's supposedly registered in Cyprus. I think there was like a record number of new companies that were registered in Cyprus as of um, January 2014. I, I believe that, or it's close to a record. I think it was like 1,400 companies that were registered in Cyprus. Now, I just want to tell you something uh, as a unique idea is that, uh, you know, when the Crimea was voting to go independent or... Um, <laughs> be back, you know, with the European Union and the Ukraine or whatever. Um, you know, if there was actually some powerful entrepreneurs behind the scenes, what they probably could have done, and, you know, it's easy to say this, but actually if Crimea was totally independent, it could be another one of those tax havens, which is very, very closely uh, related, closely, um, you know, close to, physically close to Russia where it could be, you know, a better tax rate than 
say, Cyprus. Actually, what happened with Cyprus when uh, they had the problems over there, you heard about the haircut and all the Russians were flying down there and stuff. I'm, I'm kind of had living off of some stuff. Actually, what happened was the, the British Virgin Islands, um, they're in, they're, all the money went into there. See, act, this is where it gets me with um, these people that support Vladimir Putin left and right, and they're totally blind to what's going on over in Russia. Um, the whole game, actually, between East and West is like this. Uh, the Russians want to be either the top dog or on equal footing with the West. They do not want to be like the junior partner with the West in the New World Order. The Russian oligarchy, which is represented by Vladimir Putin, who's wealthy as all hell himself, and he protects the, the racket behind the scenes, um, he's looking out for the interest of his gang, more or less, if you want to put it that way. And that's why you're seeing competition between the East and West right now. I don't know if it's maybe somewhat orchestrated. I don't know. It could be. It could be. But uh, that's actually what's going on. You know? <laughs> People are being taken a choice and saying, I don't want to go with the West, I don't want to go with these guys over here because they're corrupt and all this kind of stuff. And they're jumping over to another side that's the same damn thing. You know, we got the Chinese elite are screwed up, the Russian elite are screwed up, and the Western elite are screwed up. That's exactly what it is. Um, but the global tensions seem to be back on again uh, with the Cold War. I mean, actually, it was a statement per Obama... You know, basically he was told to say this, but it was basically a statement per Obama that, you know, they're just, they don't, they're basically on a Cold War footing again. And to me, um, they're going to try to, like, isolate Russia and everything. And But, you know, when you isolate one, if you try to isolate Russia, you know, in turn it isolates you. You know, it's like there's a big war of propaganda going on. Vladimir Putin plays it, you know, along with his news agencies that he owns. And, I don't know, it looks like, I'd say over the last years, a lot of the stuff that's going on in the West has lost, you know, there's more bad, ill, Ill feelings against the West than there is against Vladimir Putin. So he's kind of winning that war. So by them isolating Russia as a policy, it may be isolating themselves which could be very bad for the US dollar, which is, ergo, why do you keep silver and gold and whatever? That's that's why, because when it's stuff happens, it happens fast. As a matter of fact, you know, what I keep thinking about is this rigged casino game is getting more and more rigged. There's more and more suicides. You know, I read about another banker, his wife and his nephew getting shot outside of their home and all this kind of crap, and I was like, you know, I can't even keep up with this stuff. It's like there's there's all kinds of things going on with murder, suicides, people falling out of windows and things like that. And uh, it looks like, uh, to me, that's an obvious uh, sign that there's major cracks in the system going on. And, uh, you know, it's like when things break apart, it happens pretty fast, you know. We got some warning signs, you know, everything looks like business as usual. And, you know, you might see the dollar weaken significantly. Like, I don't think the dollar's, well, I'm going to say that. I don't, the only way the dollar's going to go away really bad is if there's a, a World War III or something like that. But in lieu of that not happening or something not happening that extreme, I think what will happen is the dollar is going to lose a lot of its purchasing power but it's still going to be the currency that we use here in the United States, and it's going to be around a long time. But on the other side, you're going to see the metals go up, even though they're doing bad today. And, you know, the thing is, why are they doing bad? Well, just bring it back to 101 again. J.P. Morgan never had a losing day last year, and in 90% of the days they had over fifth five over the last five years have been um, winning days. So... The markets are rigged. You know, I always put this uh, video down in the information box about the uh, oil markets and commodity markets had a rig and actually went into some of the stuff about the Gulf oil spill and, you know, some of the things that were said at that time, which made you think that they knew about it was going to happen and they bet accordingly. Um, 
you know, they're not going to tell you the masses ahead of time when silver and gold is going to go up. They're, it's just going to go up. It's just going to go up. How high? I don't know. Um, I suspect that the next time silver really... And, you know, like I said, the last time silver went up a lot, it it went up and then it really got it gets legs. It happens all at once. So, I mean, inside of six or seven months... You know, silver can go from 19, 20 bucks to way over 50. It can do stuff like that easy, easy. It can happen fast, and uh, then it can reset. It can come back down again really hard, and maybe it'll take a few years before it goes up to way over 100 or something. I hope it never goes to uh, the 500 or a thousand or anything like that, because if that's the case. Uh, we actually have um, a total uh, dissolution of the United States as we know it now, because uh, that would mean if it happened that suddenly, if it, you know, if it took 50 years or 100 years, that might be a different story. But if it happens in a few years, if it goes up to like silver goes up to four or five hundred dollars an ounce, um, that's something you don't want to hope for, because uh, that would mean that our society has actually falling apart, <laughs> so don't hope for that. Um, I don't think it's going to happen that way, and actually, the only way it's going to happen, if that actually does happen, it means we're going into World War III, and uh, there's some signs that that's going to happen, but, you know, I always say hope for the best, you know, but pff, who the hell knows, who the hell knows, if you look at history, looks like we're repeating the times in the 30s uh, before World War II, and, you know, we might be going to something worse. And that's one reason you definitely want to keep hard physical metals. Um, you know, we might see a spike up here. You, you know what I look at it? My contention is it happens in waves. In other words, um, the next time we see a record move up in silver, it's not going to be the final move up. It's going to be something that's going to move up very quickly. It'll, they'll try to fix things temporarily, stave things off for a few more years, because the financial system's not going to implode that easily in the United States. There's a lot of different things that go on, a lot of hardworking people, and uh, there's still a lot of industrious people in the United States, too. But what happens is it'll come back down again, and, um, you know, I just hope it doesn't go up to the ungodly amounts of four or $500 or more, because that would mean... The USA has been clobbered. Ultimately, if things go for a normal type of reset, maybe in 2017, 2018, you might see 100 something dollars silver, like 130 to 150 or more. It might go that high. But as of right now, you know, it's still the time to buy, but if you got enough, you don't need to keep throwing all your money into silver. Just remember that because. Um, that's not the only investment out there, but it should be one of your investments. And, you know, when it goes up, it goes up fast. And that's because people are panicking to buy it. And that's when you might want to sell some to those people.